Uh, hello folks and thank you for joining me once again this will be part four and final part of the name game and there was some we covered in part three mostly the definitions and, and origins and, and transliterations of the name Jesus now the reason, like I said before, about Judaism, the Judaic uh, Christianity uh, topic here is that that is where the name game is mainly directed, uh, especially on the final name, Jesus. Um, you don't hear people, you know, cracking on Muhammad or Allah or any of the Hindu gods or any of the dragon gods and you know saying well Quetzalcoatl is uh, uh, you know a derivation of this name or that name and trying to twist it and make it into something like they do with Jesus mainly the main one with Jesus is everybody says it's a reference to Zeus we covered that in the history and the uh, transliterations translations in the last episode number three um, pointing out that it has nothing to do with Zeus. Um, that's not, you know, it was it was a respelling, English spelling with a J of uh, Yeshu, and uh, the history behind that we covered quite clearly in part three. However, there was a few more things I wanted to add to the Jesus repertoire. Um, Real quick, we'll go through Jesus again, um, just the general. And one other thing I wanted to point out, a lot of these, uh, anywhere you look up Jesus, uh, bio or whatever, and we're going to run into some of that in this, it talks about he was most known for founding the church, the Christian church. And this is untrue. Although you'll find it all over almost every definition, bio or subject, talking about Jesus, that he was the founder of the Christian church. And he wasn't. He didn't come here to found a church. He came here to fulfill a prophecy and to complete a task. And the task being the connection, the final sacrifice, and uh, the connection and the fix of your DNA. Uh, and bringing upon a personal relationship with God. In other words, you don't need the middleman. You don't need the priest, the pastor, the father, the, you know, whatever you want to call him. Uh, you don't need the man at the pulpit. You don't need some religious uh, middleman or shaman or anybody else to perform your prayers for you, perform your rituals for you etc etc to have a relationship with the maker that's the point now a lot of people especially in Catholicism and certain other religions um, just don't seem to get this especially old school um, and I don't bother you know whatever even though we know that the Catholic Church the people who really created the church with and which was again was not Jesus he didn't create a church. He wasn't trying to create a church. That's not what he was here for. I don't know why, other than the continuing deception uh, of the church, why many definitions of Jesus say as such that he was the founder of the church, because he wasn't. He, he was obviously used as the reason to found the church. However, it was the people that came after him who founded Christianity as we know it as a quote unquote church today now Jesus um, also referred as Jesus in Nazareth is a central figure of Christianity he's a central figure whom the teachings of most Christian denominations hold to be the son of God and is regarded as a major prophet in Islam in the Islamic religion he's considered a prophet they recognize him. They recognize his existence. 
this is we're, we're making a few points here in the continuation of part four one of them is his existence because that's another part of the name game even though it doesn't refer to his name or try to twist his name into Zeus like so many foolish people do um, when they don't know the history uh, they other people try to say he never existed there's a completely made up story which is ludicrous okay it's uh, well documented in more than just the Bible and more than just the uh, other books of, of uh, testament and scripture uh, and history uh, that he was a man he was existent he was real and um, so but it, even Islam recognizes him as existent okay they don't recognize him of course as the son of God or as God in the flesh they recognize him as a major prophet though and they give much respect to Jesus as such in their religion um, I believe every time Jesus' name is is reference in, in Islam it is uh, uh, accompanied with uh, peace be upon him or peace be with him or something in reverence and respect so Christians hold Jesus that to be the awaited Messiah of the Old Testament and refer to him as Jesus Christ or simply as Christ a name that is also used secularly Virtually all contemporary scholars of antiquity agree that Jesus existed. All recognize Jesus as being real. So to this day I still get comments on some of the videos on my other channel and stuff that uh, you know, oh Jesus never existed he's a fable and this and that and you know I don't even deal with it anymore. I just eliminate those comments and uh, block the users of those comments because they're idiots okay they're totally ignorant and in fact some of them may not be so ignorant some of them are out there doing this on purpose because they're straight of the wrong spirit they're sons of the devil and uh, whether they're consciously aware of it or not is irrelevant um, we're not here to get into how the spirits work through people uh, that's another topic for another time but they do and that's one of the goals so while the quest for the historical Jesus has produced little agreement of the historicity of gospel narratives and their theological assertions of his div <clears throat> excuse me of his divinity most scholars agree that Jesus was a Jewish teacher from Galilee in Roman Judea and was baptized by John the Baptist was crucified in Jerusalem on the orders of Roman perfect Pontius Pilate now scholars have offered various portraits of the historical Jesus which at times share a number of overlapping attributes such as the leader of the apocalyptic movement Messiah a charis charismatic healer a sage and a philosopher or a social reformer who preached of the kingdom of God as a means for personal and egalitarian social transformation scholars have correlated the New Testament accounts with non-Christian historical records to arrive at an estimate chron estimated chronology of Jesus' life now of course back in the day the Jews of the day the rabbis or whatever uh, that believed in the, the you know the, of the second temple area that were before him uh, you know accused him of, of working the spirits of working through with demonic spirits to heal people and stuff instead of uh, recognizing his his power through the father and uh, as God in the flesh now most Christians believe that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of a virgin performed miracles founded the church see there we go it's founded the church died sacrificially by crucifixion to achieve atonement rose from the dead and ascended into heaven well come here then if you're going to be a bugger 
Okay, come on, bugger. Goofball. There's my, my girl here. Creaky, come on. Sorry for the interruption, folks. She has impeccable timing when it comes to this stuff. She had, I haven't seen her all morning until just now when I decide to start this. <laughs> but we forgive her. She know not. So anyway, um, now again, the, you know, like I said, the, the silliness about the founder of the church. And I, I, I understand some people get that because he created a following. And they consider that the church. He talked about how to get together and worship, etc., etc. However, it has no re what he was doing has no relation to the Christian church as we know it today, or the Catholic Roman Catholic Church that started after his death, which basically used his name uh, and twisted his messages, his teachings and mix them with sun worship and, and mystery Babylon uh, pagan rituals um, which is mostly what most of the churches are full of today especially Catholic churches um, so scholars have correlated the New Testament accounts with non-Christian historical records to arrive at an estimated chronology of life see so we're not only talking about the biblical accounts, we're talking about non-Christian historical records of his existence. Most Christians believe that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Oh, I already read that. But um, few Christian groups, read, uh, the majority of Christians worship Jesus as the incarnation of the God of, uh, God, of God, the Son, uh, or God in the flesh, and the second person of the Holy Trinity. Few Christian groups, re a few Christian groups, re reject the Trinitarianism uh, wholly or partly as non-scriptural, and uh, that gets back into the pagan ritualism and the Trinity. Uh, we won't get into that right now. But in Islam, Jesus, commonly transliterated as Isa or Isu, uh, is considered one of God's important prophets. Okay, um, and that's in Islam, like I said. Jesus is the bringer of scripture and the product of the virgin birth, but not the victim of crucifixion. Don't rub against the microphone, silly goose. Yeah, I know. You want to say hi? Everybody can hear you. Yeah, she's a lovable. Little lovable. Okay, um. <laughs> Judaism now rejects the belief that Jesus was the awaited Messiah, arguing that he did not fulfill the messianic, messianic prophecies in the Tanakh. Uh, Baha'i scripture almost never refers to Jesus as a Messiah, but calls him a manifestation of God. Now, uh, scroll down just a hair the etymology of names back to the name thing Jesus is a transliteration occurring in a number of languages and based on the Latin uh, Isus or Isus of the Greek Isuus or Isuus itself a Hellenization of the Aramic Hebrew Yeshua which is a post exilic modification of the Hebrew Yeshua or Yehoshua um, Yehoshua Joshua in other words and with the J added if it would be Joshua under influence from Aramaic in the Quran it is Isa now the etymology of the name Jesus in the context of the New Testament is generally expressed as Yahweh saves or Yahweh is salvation. The name Jesus appears to have been in use in Judea in the time or at the time of the birth of Jesus. Uh, the first century works of historian Flavius Josephus or Josephus referred to at least 20 different people with the name Jesus or Joshua. Um, Philo's reference uh, the 
uh, sorry, Metation Nominium or Nominum. Uh, item 21 indicates that the etymology of the name Joshua was known outside Judea at the time. In the Bible, he is referred to as Jesus from Nazareth, Joseph's son, and Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Paul, the apostle, often referred to Jesus as Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, or Christ, is derived from the Greek Christos, meaning the anointed, or the anointed one. A translation of the Hebrew Messiah, or Masaha, usually transliterated into English as Messiah, in the subsequent version of the Hebrew Bible, written well over a century before the time of Jesus, the word Christ was used to translate the Hebrew word Messiah into Greek. In Matthew 16:16, 16, 16, the Apostle Peter's profession, you are the Christ, identifies Jesus as the Messiah. In post-biblical usage, Christ became viewed as a name, uh, one part of Jesus Christ, but originally it was a title, Jesus the Anointed. Now, uh, the chronology, we'll go into a little bit of chronolog chronology, chronology, sorry folks, for uh, it's early in the morning still, actually for me. <laughs> even though it's not really early for most people but um, I'm trying to get this plugged out because I want to put four next to three I want them in order and uh, so I can get it posted up and then I can uh, what the heck did you get on me cat some sticky stuff what have you been getting into um <laughs> because I want to post up the new zap Pod, the latest Zeph Pod, which was a really good podcast, uh, one of his best in the last few. A um, couple of those I skipped posting because, quite frankly, I didn't agree with half of what he said. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I don't. I like Zeph. Uh, he's good when he has the proper rima uh, and the proper subject matter. Uh, otherwise, there's other things that uh, we don't agree with, um, necessarily. I mean, he, he lives his life. He's got a different life than mine, of course. But I don't just post up people. Just I, I post up, uh, if, let's just say, if I don't agree with it, I'm not going to post it. Okay, if, I, if it's not 100% in my view then I'm not going to post it, just be, I don't just, it, I just, I don't follow, okay, let's put it that way, I don't follow, um, people that relate to the same things I know and realize, then I will, uh, abdicate, but, uh, anyway, never mind, uh, let's move on, although a few scholars have questioned the existence of Jesus as an actual historical figure some early Christian sects denied that Jesus existed as a physical being most scholars involved with the historical Jesus research believe he existed but that the supernatural claims associated with him cannot be established using documentary and other evidence as discussed in the sections immediately below the estimation of the year of death of Jesus places lifespan around the beginning of the first century AD CE in the geographic region of Judea and mind you AD stands for after death meaning after the death of Jesus so uh a lot of people seem to forget that point too. I've heard people talking about stuff that Jesus did in the years A.D. Uh, Jesus didn't do anything in the years A.D. because that was after his death. <laughs> As a physical being anyway. <laughs> Other than the, the first three days. I mean, you know, the three days after. But he wasn't around for long after that. And he went on to be with the Father. Um... But that's, you know. Anyway, so uh, Roman involvement in Judea began around 63 BC or BCE 
and by 6 AD Judea had become a Roman province uh, from 26 go on that's enough go on leave me alone okay go on there's no reason for it Pontius Pilate and from uh, 26 to 37 from 26 to 37 AD Pontius Pilate was a governor of Roman Judea in this time period although Roman Judea was strategically positioned near in the Near East close to Arabia and North Africa it was not viewed as a critically important province by the Romans at the time the Romans were highly tolerant of other religions and allowed local populations such as the Jews to practice their own faith. Now, in the year of birth, the New Testament includes no mention of the date or season of Jesus' birth, and there are no historical records that pertain to it. In the 4th century, Christians in the West began celebrating the birth of uh, Jesus on December 20. Fifth, by tradition it says but Christians in the East held it on January 6th the chron uh, chronography of 354 illuminated uh, manuscript including early reference to the nativity feast on December 25th now of course most of us already know that December 25th was not when he was born we in fact know what December 25th really was a pagan holiday and it was trans Posed upon Jesus on purpose by those exact same priests that I talk about that created the true Christian religion that were the founders Jesus wasn't the founder these uh, other priests and they were basically Babylonian and Egyptian priests um, founded Christianity and what we know as the Roman Catholic Church um, along with later on same sex you know not sex sex of people uh, in secret societies and stuff also founded you know were the council of Nicaea who chose the uh, gospel as we know it today in the canon of the Bible and they chose and pick and chose which books would be included and which books would not be included supposedly upon which ones were divinely inspired according to them now two independent approaches have been used to estimate the year of Jesus birth of Jesus one involving analysis of the nativity accounts in the Gospels of Luke and Matthew along with other historical data the other working backwards from the estimation of the start of the ministry of Jesus in its nativity account the gospel of Matthew associates the birth of Jesus with the reign of Herod the Great who is generally believed to have died around 4 BC and uh, Matthew 2 1 states that Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king and uh, mentions reign of Herod shortly before the birth of Jesus however Luke's gospel describes the birth as taking place during the first census which generally believed to have occurred in 6 AD or CE most scholars generally assume the date of the birth between 6 and 4 BC other scholars assume that Jesus was born sometime between 7 and 2 BC now um, again BC is before Christ AD is after death that's what those abbreviations stand for so um, some scholars been twisting stuff and not making any sense even while they're doing it uh, the year of Jesus birth has also been estimated in the manner it is in, that is independent of the nativity accounts by using information in the Gospel of John to work backwards from the statement John or in Luke 323 that Jesus was about 30 years of age at the start of his ministry as discussed in the section below by combining information uh, from 2.13 and John 2.20 with the writings of Flavius Josephus it has been estimated around 27 to 29 AD Jesus was about 30 years of age now see that doesn't even make any sense if F AD was after death right we're talking about if, it, if, a, if he was still alive at 30 years of age after at 29 to 20, 27 29 AD 
uh, well, wh whose death are we talking about then when we say after death? So, as we know, the calendar's all screwed up. As we know, certain holidays have been put in in Jesus name which have actually nothing to do with Jesus Christmas being one of them and another one coming up that we're going to touch upon in the in the latter part of this uh, this uh, little video here uh, we'll get to that but some scholars thus estimate the year 28 AD to be roughly the 32nd birthday of Jesus and the birth year of Jesus to be around 6 to 4 BC and uh, I guess these scholars, so-called quote-unquote scholars that estimate this, uh, don't understand what B.C. and A.D. mean. <laughs> but, you know, go figure. I don't know. I'm not a scholar, right? The Gregorian calendar method for numbering years, which is the current year 2013, is based on the decision by the 6th century monk <laughs> Dionysius to count the years from a point of reference, namely Jesus' birth, which he placed in either 1 B.C. before Christ or A.D. Anno Domini. Okay. Um, and, okay, we're not getting into it deep, but uh, most people that follow the mysteries know who Dionysius was. Okay. And uh, so to take anything he said about Jesus seriously, is is quite frankly a joke. <laughs> uh, Dionysius was uh, was a complete religion of its own. It had nothing to do with uh, the Dionysian beliefs. It had nothing to do with Jesus. So um, and then we got about the start of the ministry of Jesus, etc., etc. Okay, uh, they set up here that you know. That Luke 23:23 says it was about 30 years of age at the start of this mystery, a uh, ministry mystery, sorry, and quite frankly, I don't know. We're gonna look up that real quick, just for the sake of looking it up. Uh, I actually like the book of Luke because uh, it gets certain things correct, and uh, in comparison to other books at the same time uh, and we'll get into that reference here in a minute too because of, I made a video before about the mispronunciation the misquote uh, when he uh, was hanging on the cross and a couple of the books say that he um, said father why for I thou forsaken me or whatever which is something Jesus would never say that is a twisting in the scripture it is a a uh, quite frankly a blasphemy because Jesus knew he had to die he knew what he came here for he knew not only that the men were going to turn against him and that he was going to be taken and he knew beforehand before he ever got here that this is what he had to do and so to sit there and say just because he was dying on the cross to say uh, you know father why have thou forsaken me in which the words we'll read in a minute which were nobody could translate the words at the time of what he said because basically he was speaking in tongues in a tongue that none of the people knew not even you know not even his normal Aramaic or Hebrew uh, the people around him brought him vinegar and water or whatever and and they didn't have a clue what he said uh, there's only one book in the in the canon that we have today that get it right and uh, when when he said those words he was uh, transferring his soul back into the father and uh, that you know at that time the temple rent and the whole nine yards happened right after he said that he was calling down power is what he was doing and uh, so it's a it's a I don't know why Christians buy into that why they can't see through that illusion uh, but we'll go into it here in a minute on that point um, and again you know here if you've listened this far no I am not a Christian okay I believe in Christ. Okay, I believe in Christ's teachings. I do believe Christ is Lord and God. Okay, because that's the truth. Uh, 
However, I am a Gnostic. Okay, I am not a Christian. I do not believe in religion. None of them. None of the denominations of Christianity do I believe in. I know what they are. I know who created them. I know I can look at any denomination and tell you all the pagan rituals that are involved in that particular belief or in that particular view of Christianity. Uh, they have all been corrupted and quite frankly the scripture Jesus himself or Yeshua himself tells us in the darn scripture no doubt in the canon that they included in the in the I mean in the scriptures in the can that's included in the canon he tells us that all the churches are corrupt he also warns us about the the fake Jews uh, you know people blame everything on the Jews or the Jews that are doing you know under the label of Jews are they're not Jewish they're not real Jews they're not of the bloodline they're not of the tribes but people don't seem to get that any either they want to blame everything on the Jews it's not Jews uh, not the true Jewish people anyway um, just like Israel is not a true Jewish state okay it is and Israel in the Bible when he's talking about uh, the the people of Israel he's not talking about the state of Israel as we know it today by that was created in 1948 or whatever um, that is a falsehood and that is not what the Lord is talking about in the scripture he's the Israel the people of Israel is exactly that a people at that point they were called the people of Israel long before they ever was even brought out of Egypt and given the land okay and so I, I don't want to get too deep into that and get off topic here but uh, we'll look and see here in Luke uh, 323 and I'm not going to bring it up on the screen because it but I'm gonna read it out of my own Bible here and it says uh, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age being as was supposed the son of Joseph which was the son of Heli which were in the good on 24 which was the son of Methat which was the son of Levi which was the son of Melchi and uh, which was the son of Jonah which was the son of Joseph okay now uh, No, you know this says when it, at the start of his ministry. Nowhere in the book, at least in my King James version here, does itself say that this was the start of the ministry. Okay, Luke three twenty three does not say that this was the start of his ministry, and I didn't think it did. I, I mean, even when I read this in the on the wiki here. Uh, like I said, you need to, even when you're reading these things online, you got to double check. you got to go back and you got to double check everything because they get it wrong. They have got it twisted. And his ministry started when he was about 12 years old. The first time, as far as ministry. And not to be confused with him starting a church, okay? He did not start a church of Christianity. He, that's not what he came here for. It was never his mission. And you will find that evidence of that plenty in the scripture and, and accounts of his life. Yet people constantly say that. And um, even here says he started his ministry at 30 years of age. Are you kidding me? He was standing up at 12 years old in the temple uh, putting the rabbis to shame. Because, and he didn't even need a book. He knew the scripture. Because he wrote the scripture. <laughs> uh, he inspired the scripture through spirit. Uh, for the, you know, In certain parts, of course, the books were written by certain individuals. But they were inspired through him. They were, uh, he knew the scripture you know, back and forth, up and down, without a book. And he sat there and, and uh, debated and uh, put the rabbis to shame in the temple when he was 12 years old. So to sit here and say that he started his ministry at 30 years of age is just ludicrous. Again, ludicrous. And we have another thing of ludicrousness. Uh, and it's no wonder there's so much confusion in Christianity. And uh, the religions and the different beliefs thereof. And, and 
you know, all that's by, by design. Like I said, the church, what we know is Christianity. Um, quite frankly, if you're a churchianity Christian, you need to come out of the church. You don't need the pastor. You don't need the church. You don't need the rituals. That was the whole point of him coming down here and doing what he did. So you can have a personal, one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. Okay? Now, through the Spirit. And if, you know, I don't want to hear it from the Freemasonic fans and, and you people that think you're so wise in your knowledge. <laughs> um, the Spirits work the way the Spirits work and even the Freemasons and the other uh, uh, secret societies recognize this. That's what as above, so below truly means in the higher realms meaning the higher dimensions are in control of this dimension in the physical the spirit controls the physical the spirit manifests the physical they know this that's why they do the rituals that's why they do the ceremonies that's why they go through the mantras and stuff that they do because they are invoking spiritual powers to create a physical manifestation or reaction from that. Okay? As above, so below. Has nothing to do with what you think is outer space and the earth. Okay? That, that is such a mundane, secular point of view. And it is wrong, you know. Uh, you'll find that propagated by astrotheologists and all these people that that actually believe that there's an outer space okay and uh, you know I'm here to tell you there is no outer space you think there's a vast universe out there and there isn't there is it's an illusion people it is a all part of this construct energy it's construct it's nothing more than a backdrop okay nothing more than a backdrop there are other dimensions which would be considered other universes but there is no outer space there's only one space in this construct or universe or dimension whatever label you want to put on it, it's all the same thing and that's all it is is a construct it's an energy construct no different than a freaking holodeck on the starship enterprise okay that is the perfect analogy and metaphorical example in fact that is what it, that example is for in that show in those movies um, there's a holodeck we live in a holographic universe uh, when you boil everything down to quantum physics everything is energy it is nothing more just like uh, your body is nothing more than energy uh, creating what you perceive as a physical manifestation but that's just how you perceive it because that's how your brain and your electrical uh, nerve system and stimuli has been programmed to perceive it it's no different than a video game seriously you're in a construct but again I digress let's get back to the name game and get back to this and and we've had enough of the wiki <laughs> and we're gonna just snay out of it but now we're gonna skip this but we're gonna go back to here we're just gonna hit the biograph biographical information real quick Jesus Christ was born in 26 BC in Bethlehem Judea little is known about his early life as a young man he founded Christ again it says he founded Christianity no he didn't uh, the priest that hung him on the cross founded Christianity because they saw he had a great power over people his name excuse me alone had a great influence over people and they took that. They founded the Roman Catholic Church. They founded all the ideas of Christianity and they mixed it with their pagan beliefs and their magic ritual and other aspects of Mystery Babylon. Uh, and they just used his name to exploit people 
to control people because that's all religion is religion is a man-made tool to control the masses period um, Jesus wasn't about religion so and in fact religion is re legion it's the re legioning of the people okay so back his life is recorded in New Testament more theological document than a biography according to Christians Jesus is considered an incarnation of God his teachings example for living more uh, more spiritual life Christians believe he died for the sins of all people and rose from the dead now uh, most of Jesus' life is told through the four Gospels in the New Testament, known by the uh, canonical Gospels written by Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, and John. Uh, these are not biographies in the modern sense, but accounts with allegorical intent. They are written to engender faith in Jesus as the Messiah and incarnation of God who came to teach, suffer, and die for the people's sins. And actually, there's more Kennedy left out Peter and Timothy and, and a lot of books. But, then, you know, those are the main four books. But, I mean, Peter's a very important book, too. Uh, so is Timothy. Um, or, uh, and the book of Thomas that's left out of the canon altogether. Um, sorry, I said Timothy. But, anyway. Um, Mother Mary, Virgin, Immaculate Conception. His lineage can be traced to the House of David. According to the Gospel of Matthew, and of course, that's through Joseph. Um, Jesus was born during the reign of Herod the Great. Uh, we know that by Herod was hunting him down to hunt him out. Um, you know, supposedly, you know, at the time he was put on the illusion that he wanted to worship him or, or, or give reverence to him, but he was actually wanted to kill him. Um, so they hid Jesus as the baby. Um, and um, you know, ordering all Bethlehem's male children under age two to be killed, etc. But Joseph was warned by an angel, took Mary and the child to Egypt until Herod's death, whereupon he brought the family back and settled in the town of Nazareth in Gal Galilee. And that's why he's called Jesus of Nazareth, um, even though he's born in Bethlehem, they say. There's very little written about his early life. Uh, the Gospel of Luke recounts, see, that, see, so the wiki completely had it wrong. Even the Gospel of Luke, the same Gospel, where I just read out of my paperback book here. You can, here, hear that? Pages? Yeah, the real thing. Um, <laughs> it doesn't say nowhere in, in, him being the age of 30 starting his ministry uh, like wiki just said and in fact Luke 20 or 2 41 to 52 accounts of his 12 year old Jesus accompanying his parents to Jerusalem and, and uh, became severed he's found in the temple discussing affairs with the Jerusalem's elders um, and 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 quite frankly putting them to shame when it came to the gospel and the understanding thereof uh, even at age 12, he understood more than they did. Um, of course. But after baptism, Jesus, uh, you know, he went on to see. Uh, it, it goes on to talk about again here. He, be, he began his ministry at age 30. Um, he was baptized by John the Baptist, etc., etc. So. I, I assume that they are talking about be, by beginning his ministry. That's when they're saying he started the church, um, started his church. Just because he's walking around teaching people and and and, uh, and clarifying the gospel for people and, and trying to uh, bring people into understanding, does not mean that's when he began his ministry. Um, and they skip a whole lot of years in his history in all our accounts today. Uh, from, you know, here we go from age 12 clear to age 30. There's a lot of years in there. Okay, a lot of years in there to be accounted for, which I'm sure he did a lot of stuff that uh, that is has gone undocumented. So after baptism, he went into Judea and 
desert to fast and meditate for 40 days and nights. Uh, the temptation of Christ chronicled the gospel, you know, it's chronicled. The devil appeared and tempted Jesus three times, once to turn stone to bread, once to cast himself off a mountain where angels would save him, and once to offer him all the kingdoms of the world. All three times Jesus rejected the devil's temptation and sent him off. And, yeah, as discussed before in my own personal history, I've been there, been to the crossroads. Um, so he returned to Galilee, made trips to neighboring villages, uh, during this time several people followed him, became his disciples, so I guess this is why they call this the beginning of his ministry, even though, like I said, he was ministering to the elders of the church at age 12. Now, I'm going to get out of that. We're going to go over here to the Catholic Encyclopedia and get back on the name thing real quick. Like uh, The Jesus word Jesus is the Latin form of the Greek Iosus or Iosus, uh, which in turn is a transliteration of the Hebrew Yeshua or Joshua or again Jehoshua um, as some people say, meaning Jehovah is salvation. Though the name in one form or another occurs frequently in the Old Testament, it was not born by a person of prominence between the time of Jasu, uh, the son of Nun, and Jasu, the high priest, in the days of uh, Zorobabel. It was also the name of the author of Ecclesiastes uh, and one of Christ's ancestors mentioned in the gene gene genealogy founded in the third gospel and one of St. Paul's companions uh, Colossians 4.11 during the Hellenizing period Jason a purely Greek analogy of Jesus uh, appears to have been adopted by many uh, Maccabees and the Maccabees Maccabees and Romans and Acts the Greek name is connected with the verb uh, iesthai to heal it is therefore not surprising that some of the Greek fathers allied the word Jesus with the same root because of him being a healer. Though at the time of Christ, the name Jesus appears to have been fairly common, or Joseph. And um, again, at the time of Christ, they didn't have a J. So, uh, it was imposed on our Lord by God's express order to foreshow that the child was destined to save his people from their sins it is therefore right when he explains Eusus as meaning Soteria Chiron or uh, Kyrion um, gives the meaning Thou Sotorian Soterion while Saint Cyril of Jerusalem interprets the word as equivalent to Soter this last writer, however, appears to agree with Clement of Alexandria in considering the work, word eusus, I can't even pronounce that Greek word, it's, I'm going to just say eusos, as Greek origin. And St. Chrysostom Christ, emphasizes again the Hebrew derivation or derivation of the word and its meaning, soter, thus agreeing with the exogenesis of the angel speaking to Saint Joseph and again here we have tons of saints fathers uh, philosophers etc of historical value that we recognize as real people in real history and they all okay every single one of them recognize Jesus as a real person and man Okay, not all of them recognize him as a God, but they recognize his existence. So again, I stress, this is part of the name game that people play and saying that it was a complete fable name made up, blah, 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 because they're listening to idiots like David Icke and uh, uh, what's the other, you know, one of the other, uh, oh, I don't know, I can't remember his name. He's got a fake name anyway. It's not even his real name. Uh, the stupid bald guy with glasses. Um, I'll 
I'll think of it later. It's, it's, it really doesn't matter. It's not, like I said, it's not even his real name. Most of you know who I'm talking, referring to without even saying his name. Um, so, we'll not get into that. Um, a lot of so-called truthers and conspiracy theorists, etc. Which, when this Zeth pod, this next Beth pod I'm going to post up is excellent. You need to listen to it. Um, he goes through the facts about how not only about the church corruption but about this internet business that uh, this an industry of conspiracy theory and an industry on the internet of and a lot of these people of the conspiracy theory theological uh, backgrounds use Christ as a as a doorway to get into your heart and to get into your mind and uh, a lot of them are not of Christ at all they just use that and they play like they're Christians and uh, all theological and church minded and stuff but uh, again it's it's an industry and uh, they're in it for the money okay it's called back in the day my day it was called the counterculture it's always been around the counterculture has always been around so the word Christ or Christos the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew Messiah means anointed according to the old law priests uh, in Leviticus and Exodus Kings Samuel the prophets Isaiah were supposed to be anointed for their respective offices now the Christ or the Messiah combined this threefold dignity in his person it is not surprising therefore that for centuries the Jews had referred to their expected deliverer as the anointed perhaps his designation alludes to Isaiah and Daniel or even to the Psalms and thus the term Christ or Messiah was a title rather than a proper name non proprium momen est sed nunit then supia supacio sorry uh, postitatis et regne whatever says in the lactanius uh, divine institutes uh, four seven the evangelists recognize the same truth excepting Matthew John Mark and Luke the word Christ is always preceded by the article so it is a title and uh, not a proper name. Uh, at, only after the resurrection did the title gradually pass into a proper name or as part of his proper name. Uh, became only one designation. But as a stage of the Greeks the Romans understood little or nothing about the import of the word anointed to them it did not con convey any sacred conception. Hence they substituted Christus or excellent or Christus or for Christus or anointed and uh, Christians instead of Christians and uh, there may be an allusion to this practice in Peter 2 3 um, which is rendered that the Lord is sweet sweet um, again we go on Justin Martyr the first apology uh, the Clement of, uh, of Alexandria the Stramata uh, Tertullian uh, to the nations to Lactanius uh, or Lactanius uh, divine institutes as well as St. Jerome in uh, Galatians are acquainted with the pagan substitution of Christus for Christus or Christus and are careful to explain the new term in a favorable sense. The pagans made little or no effort to learn anything accurate about Christ and the Christians. Uh, Suetonius, for instance, ascribes the expulsion of the Jews from Rome under Claudius to the constant instigation and sed of sedition by Crestus, whom he conceives as acting in Rome as part of a leader of insurgents. The use of the definite article before the word Christ and its gradual development into a proper name show the Christians identified the bearer with the promised Messiah of the Jews. He combined in, in his person the offices of prophet, of king, and of priest 
and he fulfilled all the messianic predictions in a fuller and higher sense than had been given them by the teachers of the synagogue okay and this is from the new advent which is the catholic encyclopedia now that said and done just to clarify the uh, different uh, you know difference between Jesus and Christ and Jesus Christ together explaining that whole title and name into a proper name uh, ideology um, now let me see what else uh, let me go back to the the, the Catholic thing here and we'll go into Christology oh, excuse me oh, Christology is a part of theology that deals with our Lord Jesus Christ in its full extent it comp uh, comprises the doctrines concerning both the person of Christ and his works but in the present article we shall limit ourselves to a consideration of the person of Christ here again we shall not uh, infringe on the domain of the historian and the Old Testament theologian who present their respective contributions under the headings Jesus Christ and Messiah. Hence the theology of the person of Jesus Christ considered in the light of the New Testament or from the Christian point of view is proper subject of the present article. The person of Jesus Christ is the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, the Son or the Word of the Father who was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man. These mysteries, though foretold in the Old Testament and Isaiah uh, and other places, were fully revealed in the new and clearly developed in the Christian tradition and theology. Hence, we shall have to study our subject under the triple aspect of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and Christian tradition. Now, let me point out to, and we'll get into that a little bit more here in a minute, but um, in Isaiah, in the Old Testament, when it was said his name, it was never said that his name would be Jesus. Uh, Isaiah specifically uh, says that he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And... Um, Oh, I got a piece on that here somewhere, but, um, oh, well, of course I got a piece, and again, in Matthew, and this, Matthew is going to be used, we're going to touch upon something else here in a minute, the Mormons, since I did hit the Jehovah's Witnesses, we'll hit the Mormons too, <laughs> but, um, and we're not going to go into depth on the Mormons about their space theology and uh, visitors and about Jesus basically being an alien or whatever, but, um, I wanted to go down to Matthew, and although it, it's our, in Matthew, uh, Matthew first, Matthew one, eighteen starts talking about the birth of Jesus Christ uh, was on this wise, and when his his mother Mary was his spouse by Joseph, um, she was found with the holy child of the Holy Ghost. Joseph was going to, uh, you know not make a public example of her but put her away privily which I'm not sure what means put her away means <laughs> do away with her or you know hide her or what but um, nevertheless uh, but while he thought on these things and considered them an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream saying that uh, you know fear not take thee as, as Mary as his wife and uh, the, you know, confirming that it was of the God, of the Holy Ghost, and that she had been defiled. And uh, she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, it says. And this is from the KJV, but at the same time, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, we know that it didn't say truly in that time, call his name Jesus, because Jesus was not a true name in that time. It was, uh, you know, in Hebrew, it was Yeshua. We've already gone through all that, what it really was. It's only been transliterated into Jesus for our English language with the J. Um, now, but it goes on even in the same chapter here, in the, yeah, in the same verse, 
uh, chapter and verses. But, uh, oh, excuse me again. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled by which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is means God is with us then Joseph being raised from sleep as he did they uh, did from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife Mary and knew her not in other words he didn't bed her until she had brought forth this son and called his name Jesus or Yeshua or Isu at the time it would be um, Or Emmanuel. See. Uh, so which is it? That's the question. Even in, in these recollections of Matthew. It is confusing. I understand. Um, and, and maybe I should have touched on the name Emmanuel a little bit. But uh, I mean that's easy enough. And it's going to lead us right back to here. The, the names that we've already touched upon. Because of the way that uh, the canons have been written and going forth. Now, on the church part, uh, again, you have people like uh, Constantinople, uh, Constantine, uh, these other people that propagated their church, propagated the Christian church, and he somehow got away with it. Like Constantine, you know what, he went on the rampage and uh was like uh either you believe in our god cry you know christianity god or you're gonna meet him <laughs> and he was like beheading people on the spot either you submit or we're gonna chop your head off which is about as un jesus like as you can get okay there's you know Nowhere does Jesus run around and talk about, well, if they don't believe in me, chop their freaking heads off. No, that's not Christianity, even in its most convoluted sense. So, and this is where people get the ideas of Christians, you know, because stupid rulers, okay, that were actually pagans, okay, and uh, worshippers, sons of the devil went around using Christianity as a label and an excuse. And so nowadays we get all these uh, anti-religious people, uh, the atheists or, you know, whoever, uh, talking about, uh, well, Christianity has this history of, of killing and stuff in the name of Christianity. Let me tell you, if, if it's from Constantine clear up to George W. Bush, <laughs> go around talking about we're going to spread Christianity and they start killing people they are liars they are not Christians in any sense of the word a religious Christian or a follower of Christ either way and there is a difference as I've explained um, followers of Christ are not Christians Christians are religious followers of Christ are not religious um, and the term itself should just tell you the difference. And then, you know, a lot of people's misunderstandings through the church, they listen too much to the definitions and the certain scriptures or whatever that the church wants to read to you and convey to you instead of actually picking up the book and reading what Jesus did and what he said himself. And if you do that, you'll find that, uh, Nine out of every ten churches are telling you lies, and they're telling you the wrong stuff. Because when you go read Jesus' words, it's completely different. And, uh, again, we have the conundrum of uh, hidden in plain sight, and yet people are still ignorant. Ain't that so funny? <laughs> no, it's not funny at all really but uh, I was being facetious um, so I how did I get on this page oh yeah this is Matthew 
Um, sorry, let's get back to the Catholic Encyclopedia. I know I'm r kind of rambling and jumping back and forth all over the place. Um, you can go to this page. I actually want to shorten this up because we pretty much covered the name part, which was the purpose of this. I'm not trying to get on here to preach. Um, other than preaching the separation of church and reality. <laughs> uh, church, uh, you know, separation of church and state is a joke. There's never been a separation of church and state. Church and state has always been one and the same. Um, they use religion to control the masses. Period. And religion has uh, the theological powers have always controlled the states and when I say states I mean nations countries whatever the politics is always controlled even unto this day uh, the people who control the secret societies which then the secret societies produce the people who control politics and become the so-called leaders which I don't recognize any of them as such myself. Um, I don't recognize government. It's a fi it's a fiction. Uh, it's a fiction that carries a lot of guns and force, and uh, forces its will upon the people, and and that is exactly what it does too. Even here in our so-called free world, free country of America, which has never been free. Um, wasn't founded as a free country. It was founded as a uh, uh, colony. Still is a colony under law. Um, the whole American Revolution is a social project is what it is and social control. And uh, the lies that they've told you throughout history about our history um, including the so-called American Revolution and our independence and all this is a joke. It is literally uh, a fictitious joke because by law and under law and anybody who goes into depth in studying law uh, knows this and I mean in depth beyond the academia uh, academic studies and the teachings the programmings because that's just indoctrination uh, to the bar and all that which you know people should figure it out right there even the lawyers that are involved in it you, the bar stands for the British accredited registry. Why are you? Why are you have to be bar licensed to practice law? Because we're still a British colony. We always have been a British controlled colony, and of course, that's when I say British controlled. That's again, we get into corporate measures. Goes to the crown, the crown corporation, not the monarchy crown, not the crown like wearing on the queen's head crown we're talking about the crown corporation the three nation states that make up the crown corporation's power base which are all controlled again back to the point through the theological leaders the Vatican the Jesuits even back in the day the kings they would wreak havoc all over the land but they took their orders from the church the church was who decided what could be done, what was approvable, and what was not provable, and it is still that way today. And they have their leader that's in the public view, which is no more than a leader like our president. He's a mouthpiece, like any other corporate president. He is the one who goes through the ceremonies, he does the public appearances, he does the public speeches, he does this and that, but it's the men behind him, the people who write the speeches, the people who are pulling the strings behind him, who have the real power, and that give the real approval. And, um, you know, the, t the top of the, the tier in today's society is the Jesuits. Um, and now we have a Jesuit Pope, and we're not getting into prophecy and all that, but I mean, people understand uh, this is how it is. Just understand that. This is reality of life. This is the real world. It's not what they've been teaching you in school. It's not what they've, you know, 
what you've been indoctrinated with to believe about our country or about the world. Um, this is why secret societies have secrets. Um, that's why they're called secret societies. And they rule the world. Um, so, okay, let me see if there's anything else I need from this. Certain events, you know, infancy of the Messiah. This goes on. Perhaps there's less uh, insisting predictions of better known messianic, messianic names and titles, seeing that they involve less obscurity. Thus, in the prophecies of Zacharias, the Messiah is also called the Orient, or is called the Orient. According to the Hebrew text, the Bud, in the book of Daniel, he is the son of man. In the prophecy of Malachi, uh, he is the angel of the testament. In the writings of Isaiah, he is the Savior, the servant of the Lord, the Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace. And, uh, or Lord, again, Emmanuel means Lord is among us. Uh, Lord is with us. Um, the Messianic offices are considered in general way in the latter part of Isaiah. In particular, the Messiah is considered as a prophet in the book of Deuteronomy, as king in the canticle of Anna, uh, that would be in Samuel, and in the royal song of the psalmist as priest in the sacerdotal, sacerdotal type uh, Melchizedek, uh, and in the psalmist's words, a priest forever as Goel or Avenger, and in the second part of Isaiah as mediator of the New Testament under the form of a covenant of the people and of the light of the Gentiles. Um, and that's what it is. It's a new covenant. The New Testament just means new covenant. It means before the, in the Old Testament, things were a certain way. The Lord had set out certain standards and rules and procedures and, and uh, the way things were, but that all changed when Jesus came. And when Jesus did what he did to complete that covenant, the new covenant, and that's what we're under now. We're under the new covenant. So many churches, again back to the false churches, preach a whole bunch of crap out of the Old Testament, which quite frankly is inapplicable. It, isn't, it doesn't apply anymore. Once Jesus came and, and made the sacrifice and shed his blood, which, again, we have metaphorical and analogical uh, content here because the blood stands for DNA. The blood is a blood fix to fix. He had to, the Lord had to come up because the, one, the fallen angels and the ones who rebelled against creation and thought, uh, you know, for whatever reason, out of pride or whatever, Satan out of pride, um, Lucifer out of greed and power, whatever. These different angels and different uh, beings that were created before the human race was created. Um, it's like they're just going to go on their own. And in the process, 